All right, guys, so it's a special day today. What's special about today? We're going to Hasbro. Woohoo! And it's your birthday. And it's my birthday. Yeah. All right. Hey guys, it's David from Red Wagon Dioramas. I don't usually do this, but I'm gonna give you guys a birthday video. I'm gonna tell the story of my 46th birthday, which was yesterday. I just had a really good day, and I just you know had some fun memories made, and I picked up some new uh, Star Wars and figures and that sort of thing. So I thought you guys might enjoy watching this. Uh, what was cool, my sister was able to be in town. She lives out of state, so she flew in with her two kids actually the morning of my birthday, like in the middle of the night. And my cousin flew in from Alaska that I haven't seen in 14 years, and we used to be really close. It's the first birthday in a long time that I've had like my side of the family here to celebrate, so it was really special. Got some awesome gifts from my family, went to Hasbro headquarters, got a tour from Steve Evans there with me and the kids. Incredible, I'll tell you more about that. And then of course in the, uh, in the middle of the day, uh, my sister, my cousin, and I went over to the assisted living home where my mom has been living for the last year. And she's been struggling with Alzheimer's disease. She's been declining too over the last few months. So it's been, it's been real sad, honestly. You know, she's not able to speak anymore, unfortunately. And, you know, she's deteriorated with the disease. But we had a very sweet, heartfelt visit with her. Then we went out to dinner at a family restaurant nearby with all the kids, had a nice meal. Happy birthday to you. Louder. Happy birthday, <laughs> dear David. Got home, my cousin treated me to the gifts that she got. Just felt really great to have family over, you know? Made me feel special. And uh, I wanna say thank you on this video to my wife and kids and my sister and niece and nephew and my brother-in-law and my cousin and everybody else in the family and everybody, all you guys on Facebook and everything wished me well wishes. So thank you, it was a wonderful birthday. But let's get to the birthday haul. Let me show you some of the gifts we got. First, my wife, so sweet. She, I had just had the conversation with her again. It's like, I'm cutting back on action figures. I'm done buying action figures. We've got too many, been spending too much money. We got to rein it in. And then she's at Walmart texting me in from the Star Wars aisle saying, hey, do you have this guy? Do you have this guy, this guy? The kids and I want to get you a Black Series guy for your birthday. So I picked out from the photos that she was texting me from Walmart. I got uh, Balin Skull here from the Ahsoka show. And he was one I hadn't picked up yet. So my wife and kids uh, picked me up a Black Series figure, which was very cool and he has a spot on the shelf next to the other Soka figures. Next, my wife picked up a Transformer for me, and I don't really collect Transformers, but I had actually seen this guy on the shelf at Walmart a couple weeks ago, and I thought it was pretty interesting. And it's the little Spike character from the Transformers movie when Spike gets his, uh, whatever, mech suit. And uh, just a little tiny little figure, you know, he's like three inches tall or whatever, transforms into some kind of ship or something. It was a cool little thing that my wife Thought, you know, I bet David would like that. And she was right, I did. And she also grabbed me a little plushie. She got me an Ahsoka plushie. I don't do many plushies, but I do have a handful down below here. So I appreciate that. Now next, my cousin came in from Alaska with, what, three, four gifts for me? All Star Wars stuff that was just incredibly surprising and awesome. She got me a Hot Wheels car. This is just like the R2-D2 car. Again, I don't really collect Hot Wheels at all, but this thing is cool. It's got blue chrome wheels. It's got the dome, the clear dome there. Fun little Star Wars toy here, a little race car, R2-D2 car. Uh, next, she had this like Boba Fett uh, little figurine. It's just, it's like a two gigabyte thumb drive from like 2012 or something. Again, she lives in Alaska and shipping's expensive. So she's been waiting all these years for a time to, to bring it to me. And th this was the time. But check out what my cousin got me. This was so cool. Two big Star Wars books. This is the Star Wars Vault. The Star Wars Vault by Steve Sansweet. It is full of Star Wars memorabilia. It's like a, basically a Star Wars scrapbook and it's got um, media from when the movies came out, the films, it's got, it's got like copies of pages of the scripts and George Lucas's own handwriting. It's got um, posters and flyers and blueprints from the ships and just all kinds of cool material in this thing. So, and it also comes with two audio CDs but I guess the audio seeds are packed full of like podcasts and interviews and all kinds of stuff. This book's been out since 2007. So if you're a Star Wars fan, you guys have probably seen this like over a decade ago and know all about it. But for me, I missed this one. Not something I had or even knew about. And I'm really excited to get into it. This is a really cool gift. My cousin also got me this cool book. This is the Star Wars year by year visual chronicle updated edition. Uh, when was this put out? Like. I think around 2013 or something like that. It covers the history of the movies from the early 70s and the development of the films through the original trilogy, 
then the period between the trilogy with like some of the TV shows, the holiday special, Ewoks, droids, all that. Then the prequel trilogy, and then it ends with Clone Wars. So basically it goes through, it goes through 2012, which is awesome. So this is all pre-Disney Star Wars. It's basically all Star Wars before Disney got it, which I think is pretty cool. Some excellent gifts. I was really surprised. And it just felt really sweet that after all that she bought these for me years ago. And honestly, that was before I was back into collecting. So I probably wouldn't even appreciated them as much as I do now, being much more of a, a you know more active Star Wars fan. So it's just really cool getting those those two books. Really awesome. All right, and then my wonderful sister made me a handmade set of Star Wars gnomes. Check these guys out. You got Chewbacca and Leia and Luke and Obi-Wan, Master Yoda, Vader, Stormtrooper, and Palpatine. So this is cross-stitch. Um, I know nothing about cross-stitch, but I just think these look so cool. She put a month of effort into this stitch by stitch by stitch. That's very cool. I'm going to get it framed and hang it up down here somewhere. So thank you again, Allison. Awesome gift. While I'm showing you guys this one, I got to show you what she got me for Christmas last year. Oh, when is it? Look at this baby Yoda she made. This thing is amazing. I know I showed it off my Instagram, but I never gave it a, you know, a full uh, show off on YouTube, but handmade this crocheted uh, Grogo for me. That was a little gift she made for me last year. So really appreciate my sister. Her and I are very tight. She's two years younger than me. We've always been close and uh, dealing with uh, my elderly mom over the last year has really brought us closer. So even though she lives across the country, our hearts are very close to each other. So uh, really appreciate her and her thoughtfulness in these awesome Star Wars gifts, handmade. So very cool. Thank you. All right, so what else did I get that I had bought for myself and it was waiting to open? Uh, I should share those too because those were pretty cool. I had ordered from Pulse. I had ordered the retro Indiana Jones. It comes with the uh, Holy Grail there. This was the last figure in the line that I didn't have from the uh, retro figure. So picked him up on Pulse. I actually got two of them, one to open, one to play with, and one to keep carded. So there you go. Indiana Jones retro collection. I do like those figures. You guys know I'm, I'm into the retro style stuff. So the special box that I had uh, put aside for my birthday was my second purchase from the custom action figure maker in the Netherlands, Graham, behind the Next 17. You guys see my other video where I opened up uh, some of the Cantina aliens and the bartender. I had made a second purchase from him a couple, you know, right after Christmas, and I ordered three more figures from him. So these are factory molded, you know, injection molded figures, not 3D printed. Basically figures that Kenner never produced, right? So here's Uncle Owen. Got nice soft goods, got some little, uh, I don't know, some kind of like scanning tool there in his hand. And then I picked up farm boy Luke. There he is with his poncho. He's got his binoculars there for going to look for R2 when he runs away. I also picked up one of the last uh, Efont Mons figures that uh, Graham had for sale there. This was the first figure he did when he started out. I never purchased it, so I'd been waiting for a while and I... I tacked it on with the uh, purchase of the other two figures. So he's very cool. And I'm going to put him in my uh, Jabba's Palace setup, of course. Also was able to order one of the uh, one of the little, I don't know, mollusk slug things that's on the wall of Jabba's Palace. And whatever these little alien things are, he calls them rock warts. Anyway, a little set of uh, the slug and the warts for Jabba's Palace. Pick those up as well. So that was a really cool purchase from the Next 17. If you guys are into Kenner, I totally recommend you go check out his uh, website. And he's got an Etsy store and stuff too. Figures are awesome. It's very cool to get some new figures like this. Okay, so that was the end of my birthday pickups. Oh wait, did I forget to tell you about Hasbro? Going into Hasbro. So, a tour to Hasbro. Uh, very cool. About a month ago, when I figured out my sister was coming into town, I reached out to Steve Evans on Instagram, messaged him, and uh, I asked him basically if we could have a tour of Hasbro, and he said yes. So thank you, Steve. It was great, awesome time. You know, he couched it beforehand saying, you know, don't expect a lot. I can't show you any of the cool stuff. Can't take you behind the scenes. I can just walk you through kind of the public areas and give you kind of the standard tour. Maybe be about 20 minutes or so. You know what? I was happy with that. I was like, you're on. We'd love that. Uh, I would love it. The kids would love it. I've always 
had a fascination with Hasbro because it was just my childhood, you know, everything G.I. Joe, Star Wars, all that. So going to HasCon back in 2017 was an awesome experience. That was right when I was getting back into collecting and seeing all the brands and all the toys and everything and just realizing how much they had a, a part in my childhood. Uh, all that nostalgia I have uh, is, was Hasbro. So going to the headquarters was a was a really cool thing for me and the kids uh, really liked it. And Steve was Steve. So engaging, so warm, so friendly, taking time out of his day. I mean, honestly, he spent almost an hour with us just walking us through what he could show us. You know, obviously Hasbro has this huge family of IPs that they've accumulated over the years. So they had kind of a, a gallery tour as you walk down the main hallway and, and you could see a, a sampling of those toys. So we got to see like all the glass display cases of some of the archive toys, like a, a boxed Kenner Rancor. Uh, a box G1 Transformers Devastator, all these all these archive toys and, and everything else in their product line, you know, Play-Doh and Tonka trucks and Play School and board games, Monopoly and Clue. And if you guys have seen that uh, video from PulseCon that Steve did, I think he's done it two years in a row, where they've kind of walked through some of the, the main areas of the offices at Hasbro. That's what we saw. We saw the main hallway, where uh, with the glass display cases and some of them like kind of looks like kind of like a museum display, you know. So here we are in memory lane. This is a little area of 1027 building that we keep. I don't know, just some of our little kind of uh, artifacts and toys from yesteryear. I mean, what about you know, just an original Monopoly board cut from the very tablecloth of Charles Darwin, like 1935. You know, there's only a few of them left in the world, probably something like that. And then you turn the corner and you're in the big, uh, long atrium, you know, the clear story windows. And that's basically the old factory product, you know, the factory line where they, where they made everything. Here we are on Main Street, by far our longest, widest corridor. I don't know what we call it. This splits the 1027 building clean in half. And imagine 70, 60 years ago, this is where they made the toys. This was the production line, it's incredible. So it's no surprise that if toys were made here, this is where you'll find, nice sweeping action there, James, you'll find our staff toy store. The toy store's there, that wasn't open, unfortunately, it was closed the day we were there, but we got to see it, you know, and you walk through some of those meeting areas, some of the common spaces they have at Hasbro where they do all their functions and stuff. And Steve, you know, personalized it with some of his stories, and we, he told us a little bit how, how he got into Hasbro, and. You know, and I'd heard some of that before talking to him in the past, and he shared that on his channel. And you know, starting with graphic design in England, and then eventually getting into you know moving to the states, and then being on Star Wars and being on Marvel, and, and now most recently taking a new position where he is, I think, uh, like design director for adult fan fan collector lines for Marvel and Star Wars. I'll have to look that up, Steve. Sorry, I butchered that. That was just great. It was uh, smiles all around from me and the kids. And when we when we wrapped up, we were just it was it was a very memorable experience for us. I had my eight year old there, my thirteen year old, my fourteen year old nephew, and my fifteen year old son, and all of them were just having a good time walking through Hasbro. It was a good. It was a good experience. Plus, they gave them free candy. That was you know that's a way to get kids free candy. Good job. Okay, quick recap here. We just got out of Hasbro touring with Mr. Stevie. Thank you, Steve. That was a lot of fun. I didn't do any filming or photos inside because you're not allowed to, but we did get to walk the middle corridor and saw a bunch of like their historic display cases of their old toys and stuff. It was really awesome. What do you guys think? How was it? It was, it? Cool. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. It was awesome, yeah. it was good. What uh, was your favorite thing? I liked the vintage Transformers and G.I. Joe. Was it Menasaur? Was it Menasaur? I don't know. I didn't get a good look at them. Yeah, there was Menasaur and Devastator. Yeah, so there were G1 Transformers on display that were unopened from their their storage vault, Steve said. There was some original G.I. Joe. There was the Night Raven, Vintage Star Wars Rancor in box. Jabba Play-Doh. Oh, the Jabba the Hutt Play-Doh set. Yeah, and the Ewok Play-Doh set. Original Monopoly game from like 1935. Oh yeah, that, crazy. that was cool. Mm -hmm. Like, like the Monopoly and like the display case. Yeah. Tim liked the free M&Ms. <laughs> and the free fruit water. The fruit water was great. So Hasbro has good water. It does, <laughs> isn't it? Okay. Help me, I'm being kidnapped. I need to get out of here. They took me to Hasbro. They're going to turn me into an action figure. I need to escape. <laughs> <laughs> One question I got to ask Steve was uh, about his new title. And I said, you know, I consider Steve uh, a friendly acquaintance. And... Uh, I didn't want to bring him down or anything, talk about any of the negativity. 
But I was curious, you know, what this means for the Black Series line, Marvel Legends, TBC, uh, with him kind of in this new position. And I, I asked Steve, I said, is this is kind of new, right? Like, I don't remember Hasbro really acknowledging that, you know, it's adults that are buying these lines. So, you know, it's always in the toy aisle at Target or Walmart. It's with the toys. It's a kid's product. And you hear that kind of back and forth in some of the discussions. But he did he did say, yeah, this is this is something new. Because in the past, like when he was on Star Wars for five or six years, whatever, he did all of Star Wars, right? He was in the design team for Star Wars. And that included Black Series and, and TVC. And but it also included the preschool lines. And if like if he was on it today, that would be like the Mission Fleet line. And, and same with Marvel. You know, Marvel has all the little kids Marvel toys and the little four inch figures that are out now. Uh, which are different and they're marketed different. Hasbro apparently is finally acknowledging that and has put Steve in a place where he is now working, as he described it as a kind of a horizontal, you know, lateral um, position where he's he's in that zone working with the adult aimed lines for both Marvel and Star Wars. And he specifically said he's doing Star Wars Black Series, TVC, and the Retro Collection. That's for Star Wars. I assume for Marvel, really all they've got is the Marvel Marvel Legends, you know, for uh, for adult collectors right now on the Marvel side of things. I fully expect that it's probably a hard time to be at Hasbro right now. And I didn't broach that subject with Steve. You don't, you don't need to talk about that stuff when we're doing a fun tour. To be realistic, he's probably got a hard job ahead of him. But I think it's promising that his team and whoever is above him has recognized the adult collector market and has specifically tasked Steve to work on that. I think that's good news for all of us. Uh, we'll see what comes of it. I hope that they are able to keep making great action figures because I love great action figures. Basically, it was just a fun walkthrough with, with Steve. It was nice to see him again. I had met him a couple times at the Chris Kong convention we'd done and also some of our collector hangouts we do locally. He's attended some of those. So it was nice to see him again. And he's generally a good guy. And, uh, you know, you, you guys all see him online, what he puts out on Instagram and YouTube. I give him the benefit of the doubt for sure that he's doing the best he can with what he's working with. You know, he's always been a guy who's open to hearing the criticism, right? So I think he would tell you, yeah, let him know what you think about TBC and Black Series and Marvel Legends. He's listening. Apparently someone over him higher up the corporate ladder has enough uh, forethought to put him in a position where he's specifically to work on the adult fan base. So hopefully that can uh, translate into some change in the lines for the better. That's basically all I can tell you about that. I do want to say thank you again to Steve. We had a great time. Everybody say thanks, Steve. Thanks, thanks Steve. Steve. Thanks. thanks a lot. Also, as a bonus, when we were leaving, Steve brought out some, uh, some little presents for the kids. He gave each kid one of these. Yeah, that's the Deadpool, uh, that's the Deadpool Bob uh, two-pack Marvel Legends from the SDCC uh, last summer. This was not something that we had picked up yet, so didn't have it, and now we do, and that is awesome. Uh, so guys, that is my birthday story for my 46th year on this planet. I had a memorable trip to Hasbro, had a very memorable time visiting with my mom, with my sister and cousin, had some great family time with the niece and nephew and my kids and my wife, of course, um, some good food, some good gifts good memories. Feel free to leave me a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything I shared. Be happy to chat with you guys. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for the support on the channel. Hit the like button for me. If you're new, consider subscribing and I'll catch you on the next one. All right, bye.